you came to me and that I were of me when I was so lost, so lonely. You came to me, took my breath away, showed me the right way, the way to lead. You filled my heart with love, showed me the It's to be with you, you are my one true love, taught me to never judge, now all I want is to be with you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونستعينه ونتوكل عليه إنه خير ناصر ومؤين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وأشرف أنبيائه ورسله أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته التيبين الطاهرين المأسومين وأصحابه الخيرة المنتجبين. To continue our discussion concerning the philosophy of Islam, we have covered few topics. We discussed about the systematic the process of systematic thinking. We have discussed then later on the criteria of the right religion. We also covered the uh, logical question why we need religion why we need revelation and then uh, last week we talked about the existence of God and the logical reason for existence of God and the rationals for God's existence and also we discussed last week that we are going to cover the characteristics of necessity necessary being this week. Last week in our discussion we um, uh, proved uh, that necessary being exists and also I talked extensively that philosophers when it comes to God they don't have names like us. They don't call, um, they, they don't even you know come to conclusion about names. It's all religions which they put names to that being which they prove. Philosophers, if you talk to a philosopher concerning sugar, uh, what is the name of sugar? They don't call sugar, you know, with that particular name. For philosophers, sugar means wajib al-halawa, the one which it is, which its uh, sweetness is necessary. So the same type of titles they put to God, they don't call it God, they say the being which it's exists, which is being is necessary. Uh, uh, that type of being which um, is a necessary being. So that wajibul wujud is the title of God when it comes to philosophers. So we proved last week the existence of wajibul wujud and the existence of the necessary being. Now, today we are going to, tonight we are going to cover a very important aspect of Allah and God, whatever you want to call, and that is the characteristics of necessary being. What type of characteristics this necessary being that we have proved last week can have? The first characteristics of necessary being, the first characteristic is that cannot have a history of nothingness. Let me explain. <clears throat> um, there was no time that the necessary being was not there. So you cannot trace back the history and reach to a point that necessary being didn't exist. 
as there was no time that sugar was not sweet. From the time that you know sugar, from the time that sugar was born, sugar was sweet. The sweetness in the sugar necessarily existed from the time that sugar came to existence. So the same situation is with, with a necessary being. Necessary being is a being which its being is necessary. And when its being is necessary, there is no time that it was not there. So always it has been. As for example, there was no any time in the history of man mankind, in the history of science, in the history of technology, that 2 plus 2 was not 4. There was no any time that 2 was not an even number. There was no any time that two paralleled lines were, were crossing each other. There was no any time. So necessary being n has no history of nothingness. That you can say there was zero and then zero was plus number one. Now we have number one and now it's equal to one. There is no such time to say there was this one was once a zero. Um, so existence has not been separated from necessary being at any given time always a necessary being is with existence in other words the same um, way that we discussed last week that cake is sweet because of sugar um, coke is sweet because of sugar uh, mm, some other drinks are sweet because of sugar. Everything is sweet because of sugar, but the sweetness of the sugar is necessarily in sugar exist. The same way, the existence of me is because of God. The existence of you is because of God. The existence of the trees are because of the, because of the existence of God. The existence of galaxies around the world is because of the existence of God. But when it comes to existence in God, it is necessarily exist. Sugar is necessarily sweet and God necessarily exist. Um, the being with a history of nothingness is a possible being. Why we say that God has no history of non-existence because if there is such a history then immediately when we can prove the time of nothingness of God then no more it is a necessary being necessary being the word is there the words say I am necessarily existing and there is no time that it was not there and also <clears throat> cannot have a destiny of nothingness the same way that God cannot have a history of nothingness, there is no any time that you can say that it is going to be leading to nothingness. As exactly the same example that I've said, 2 plus 2 was always 4, is now 4, it's going to be 4 forever. There is no any given time you can say that 2 plus 2 can become 5. You cannot expect science and technology to be developed and say, sorry, at today the science and technology is not developed so much to say 4 plus 4 becoming 5. But definitely we are expecting another Einstein to come and he will definitely prove that 2 plus 2 can become 5. It is not going to happen. Don't wait for such a time. Ha hasn't happened in the past and it is not going to happen in the future. The same way is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with God. Has no history of nothingness and there is no any time that its destiny is going to be nothingness. So 
will not lead to nothingness. Existence cannot be separated from necessary being at all. The third characteristic cannot be a compound. Any compound being for its existence needs its part. Look at the formula that we have here. We have H2O, and that is water. It is a compound. The three molecules has came together, and they established something that we drink, and that is water. Now, remove any of them. What's going to happen? We are not going to have water. Water is going to be dissolved. Just now, the uh, scientists are trying to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen. And they are trying to create another fuel and make another fuel from the hydrogen which they are going to separate from the, from the water. So water is going to be separated and no more you can call it water. It's going to be either pure hydrogen or pure oxygen. So it is a compound made of three things. One, two, three. And as soon as you separate any of them, we are not going to have water. That is the, the characteristic of any compound being. Now, God is not a compound being. Why? Because for this to be water, for this to be water, for water to be this, he needs this and need this and need that one. The three elements are necessary. All of the three has to be. One is not enough. That one is not also enough. The third one is not all. All of the three must come together, establish a compound, and then immediately water is born. Any compound has got this characteristic that this one need O and O need H. And each of them need each, each, each other to establish water. And as soon as any of them missing, then we are not going to have water anymore. That is the characteristic of any compound being. Now, if God is compound, then what happened? Then each part of God is going to need each other for continuation. And necessary being can not depend on its parts, on anything else to exist. It's becoming another possible being. It is possible because this are in the neighborhood of this and they established water. And if they are not together, then we are not going to have water. It's going to be oxygen and hydrogen only. Why we call it water? Why we don't call it hydrogen separately or oxygen separately? Because they are no more hydrogen and they are no more oxygen. They are compound thing called water. And if God is also a compound being that same made of Father and Ruhul Qudus and the Son, what's going to happen? Or compound being Jibreel, Israel, and himself, for example. It is not possible. It's not going to be necessary. Being then God for its continuation of being God need Israel. And as soon as Israel one day die, then God is going to miss something. It's, not, it's going to be an, an incomplete God. Exactly like water, if one of them is gone, then it's going to be an incomplete water. So God cannot be compound. Has to be uh, extended and has to be uh, total, has to be absolute with no any complexity. Any compound being cannot have independent existence like exactly here these if you want to call it water it cannot have independent existence here hydrogen is hydrogen and oxygen is oxygen if you want to call it water has to be together to be called water 
cannot have independent existence. This one cannot separate its way and go there and say, I am water. As soon as you separate it, sorry, you have been separated from the rest and you are called now Mr. H, hydrogen. Don't call yourself water. Don't call yourself anything else. You are hydrogen. So God cannot be compound because a compound being cannot be independent in existence. The fourth characteristic cannot be physical. <clears throat> Necessary being cannot be physical. Any physical being is a compound one. Now, these are all based on each other. The first one, the second one, the third one. Now, we have agreed, we have understood that God cannot be a compound. Necessary being cannot be a compound being. Now, based on that logical terminology that we all accepted and it's completely logical, we, have, we are giving another logical reason, and that is any physical being is a compound one. As soon as you are physical, then you are definitely a compound one because it's not possible to create, to have, to be seen if you are not compound. Anything, even the smallest particle in this world that haven't been found yet. Do you know that the scientist up to this moment has not found and has not discovered the smallest thing? And they have not discovered the biggest thing up to this moment. All the middle part we discovered, we managed to discover. But the smallest particle in this world, we have not discovered yet. But we know it, hap it is there. But they haven't discovered. But if you find that the smallest particle in this world, definitely it's a compound. It's made not, it's not a single molecule. It is definitely made of the two atoms, three atoms. And then inside that smallest particle, they are floating again. To that extent that if the science and technology one day can be developed and go back to that smallest thing that up to now hasn't been discovered and you discover it in a hundred years later, again, that is going to be also another dividable thing. Definitely, for sure, 100%, it's going to be a dividable particle. Just now that we are sitting here, it, there is a big, the biggest examination machine of the world. The biggest test and examination and laboratory, the science laboratory of the world is where? In the border of France and Belgium called CERN. In CERN, the whole scientists of the world have come together to discover what divine particle. They are after divine particle. They are uh, extending the speed of the light with a hope that the light with a particular speed should be heated and to be bitten into, a, um, into some waves and then they hope that a particle out of light, which is energy, can be produced and they can call it now. We have managed to find the start and the beginning of the universe that how light has come to exist and to become particle, to become physical. Any physical thing that you can find, it is a compound thing, for sure. So any physical being is a compound one. And as soon as you are a compound one, then you cannot be necessary being. Necessary being cannot be compound. 
and because necessity being cannot be compound can not be physical also cannot be physical you cannot see because anything that you are able to see either by the naked eye or by the microscope or any f machine or facilities that you can have it is a compound and compound cannot be a necessary being the five characters the fifth characteristic cannot be seen also I said this is the continuation of the same um, what you call argument only physical things can be seen uh, God cannot be compound so God cannot be physical so because it's not physical then you cannot see cannot be in a time or place also because anything which is physical needs a place and time but when you are not physical what time you're talking about what place you're talking about for something which does not have a physic you cannot talk about time and place when it comes to non-physical, to metaphysic. For example, you had a dream last night about, uh, you know, the whole life was sum summarized in probably a few seconds. You saw everything. All history of your life came to your dream because there was no time and there was no, it was not physical. If it was going to be physical, it was going to take the whole lifetime for what happened in your dream to happen in reality. But because it was not physical, it was a metaphysical experience that you had in your dream, that's why it doesn't need time and it doesn't need place. The sevens cannot be changeable. A necessary being cannot be changeable. Again, based on the same philosophy. It's not compound, so it's not physics, so it's not, you cannot see it. It doesn't need time, it doesn't need place. And because you, ca you cannot imagine time and place, because everything which happens, it happens in time. And it happens in place. And because God is not in time, and it's not in place, changing is not happening in God. God cannot be promoted. God cannot be completed. God cannot be perfected. God cannot be reduced. If the whole people of the world come together and worship God, he's not going to be a better God. And if the whole world go against God, he's not going to be a lesser God doesn't change he's not said today I'm more powerful or oh, today I'm angry I'm going to create earthquake and I'm going to kill everyone around the world it's not such thing he doesn't come just a night out and said no I'm not a good mood so uh, please Israel come here I want all people of China to go because I want to enjoy it there is no such thing in when it comes to God he is not changeable he always stable because not compound, is not physic, it doesn't need time, it doesn't need place, and he's complete, he's perfect. When you reach to the position of perfection, then for you change does not have meaning. Look at this, this is a very uh, good picture, although uh, they are using it basically on, in, um, in psychology, but uh, you know, I can also use it here. Uh, look here you can see there is a circle and then behind there is a square okay now if the light is here if you put a torture here I've got a torture there yeah if I put use my torture from this side then the picture there the shadow is going to be a square but if you stand this side, it's going to be 
you, because the, the light, the, the torture is going to be behind the, the circle, and then you have a circle there. And if you are from that side, you are going to have a, what you call a triangle. So that is the situation from which perspective you look at the subject. That is when it comes to physical things. But when it comes to n absolute being, it's just like that circle. If, if you look from the, to the circle from this side, you will see circle. If you look from this side, still you see circle. If you look from that side, still you see circle. Look from this side, still you see circle. But when it comes, when, when, when it is to compounding and those with a complexity, then it depends from which perspective you look at the matter. However, uh, there is a big question here which comes to everyone's mind. Of course, we are going to discuss about um, about the two very important characteristics of God in our next session. One is the unity of God, which needs a separate session. And the other one is the justice of God, that we are going to have a completely separate session on that because of the importance of the two attributes I haven't included with the characteristics of necessary being tonight. We are going to discuss about that one. But I'm going to answer one very important question. Why can't we see God while he is everywhere? He is here. He is there. He is just here. We are full of him. I am surrounded by him. He is more closer to me than the veins of my jagger. Um, I'm floating in him. He is everywhere. Be my back, before, left, right, up. Down. Imam Sadr has got one sentence. If say you want to commit sin, fine, go ahead, do it. But go somewhere that God is not there. <laughs> He's everywhere. But how I cannot touch, how I cannot see if He is everywhere, why I cannot see Him? The answer is here. Can you see another line here? Okay, why not? Why not? Why you can't see anything here? There is two lines here. There is one, the same A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. The same letters are written in this line and there is another line there. Why can't you see those letters? I swear I did it myself. It is there. But you can't see them. Why? No? Very good. Thank you very much. Because it is the same color. If everything in this world was white, just imagine. I was white. This light, there was no red. There was no any color around the world, but only white. What a boring life. Nothing was going to be recognizable. You cannot see tree, you cannot see cars, you cannot see flower, you cannot see garden, you cannot recognize if he is my mother or my sister. You cannot realize this is my brother. You cannot see faces. You see faces white. You go to other one is white. You eat. You are, You don't know if you are eating sandwich or you think I don't know burgers, because everything is white. You cannot recognize anything from anything. Just like here, why you can see because it is different in color. Otherwise, here. In the first line is the same words, but it is the same color you cannot see. A Mr. Fish has been born in the ocean. From the time that fish opened the eyes, faced something called water. Born in water, floating in water, 
swimming in water, dying in water, swimming in water, eating from water. Every cell of this fish is from water. But now go to Mr. Fish, say, Mr. Fish, do you know where you are? He says, what do you mean? He says, Mr. Fish, do you know you are inside water? He says, please, I don't have, I'm not in good mood. Please don't make jokes today. Water, what is water? But Mr. Fish, you are floating in it. He says, please, look, I don't have time. <laughs> please, I don't have time for you. But you are drinking water. No, I never saw water in my life. I never met water. I don't recognize something water. So please don't waste your time. Convince me that water exists. Tell to Mr. Fish, just out of water for a while and hold it in your hand and let, let it a little bit breathe out of fish, out of water. And as about this water, this fish dies, the last breed you tell him, do you know what's what? Yeah, now I understand that I was in water. So that was water. Why fish cannot digest the existence of water while fish is born in water, dies in water, drinks water, floating in water, surrounded, overwhelmed by water. So simple, because for fish there was no opposition. Only one thing from beginning of his life fish experienced, and that was water. As soon as you bring the fish out and he managed to compare water and non-water environment, the water and the oxygen, the atmosphere, and then compared between the two, fish realized that, wow, that was water. And because we are floating in God, Born in God, surrounded by God, feeded by God, created by Him, being overwhelmed by Him, always experience nothing but God. Experience we every day, we experience nothing but God. And unfortunately or fortunately, there is no one to be able to take us out of the boundary of God. If there is another God, if there is another environment, and another God exists, and somebody from that world can come and take our tail from the world of God number one to that world, and then we are able to compare between God number one, God number two, here we have got oxygen, there we have got something else, then you will be able to recognize. But because you cannot compare the God that you are floating in with anything else because God does not have an opposition. There is a famous saying from Imam Ali alayhi salam which says, Everything is recognizable by the opposition. And because God does not have no opposition to compare with, God remains unrecognizable for the rest of our life and the rest of its existence. That's why we cannot see God. Otherwise, God exists everywhere. The world is full of God. Galaxies are floating in God. There is nothing in the world beside God. He cannot be seen because we cannot compare Him. Salawat. My Ummah, my Ummah, He will say, Rasulullah on that day Even though we've strayed from him and his way My brothers, my sisters in Islam Let's struggle, work and pray